I'm not exactly sure what what people how people perceive this thing called white privilege. I mean, obviously, we're, white people are privileged in this country. There's a legacy of that. Um, black people have been have been severely disadvantaged over very, very many years, but there were many white people who were who, who were in the struggle, active in the struggle, who who. Can you tell us more about how you were actually a victim of apartheid? Well, I was a songwriter, and I believed that I, uh, that it was my responsibility to speak out in my songs, um, not just about the injustices, about the world that I lived in, you know, to have a, a, a balanced sort of outlook on, on the world. And part of that was the fact that I lived in deep apartheid South Africa, which was an awful time for for everybody that was involved in it, including white people. I mean, it, it you know it dragged people down. Apartheid was a terrible, terrible sin. Um, I spoke out against apartheid in my in my songs and in my music and in my performances. And um, the security police went on a very, very concerted campaign to shut down my music career. So when I was just at the at the pinnacle of of my music career, when I was about to to break internationally, when you know the whole world was really at my at my, at my fingertips, so to speak. Um, my music career came to a very sudden end, but in a very secretive way, because the the campaign against me was done covertly by the security police, um, and I only found out about it during the submissions to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The extent of what of what actually had happened. What actually happened? Sure. Well. You know, um, my telephone was 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 bad. My mail was intercepted. Remember, at that time there was no social media, there were no cell phones. We relied on mail and you know, landline phones. Um, uh, where places where I used to play were threatened. Um, uh, the police would go around to, to to places and say, "If you have anything to do with that, Rod Lucy, he's imminent. He's, he's going to be imminently arrested because he's a member of the Communist Party." He's dangerous for the security of the state. If you have anything to do with them, we are going to come down on you. They, um, a couple of times, the venues where I played got tear gassed, and they used that as examples of you know what would happen to other people that that employed me or had anything to do with me. The record company that I was with were threatened, um, and from one day to the next, they just wouldn't take my calls. Had nothing to do with me. So my music career just came to a very very rapid end. Um, I was a young man. I was just recently married. I had a young child. Uh, my life fell apart, you know, as a, as a result of that. It was, um, and I had to find other ways of making a living. So you became uh, a doorman, and after that, into journalism. I, after a couple of tries at, at different things, I, I went into journalism. I became a television news cameraman and producer for a, for a large television news agency, um, which gave me a strong insight into the, you know what was going on in South Africa. Basically, have a strong sense of survival. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And, <laughs> and reinvention. And reinvention. Yeah. And uh, what actually drove you, and how did you actually forgive? I mean, you know, obviously well, suffered tremendously. Well, I can tell you that it wasn't all just me. Um, my the perpetrator, the, the policeman who was, you know, the one responsible for my downfall, a guy called Paul Erasmus, actually phoned me, and. Um, and made an apology. He said on the phone, he said, look, I just want to tell you that I'm really sorry for what happened back then. And um, and we ended up meeting um, actually on the sort of set of a, of a documentary film that was being made. And I just found that, you know, he, he in himself, he wasn't a bad person. Um, he was a person that was as much a victim of, of the apartheid system as anyone else was. But the fact that he made an apology to me um, I had the choice at that point then to either accept it or reject it, to either carry on with the pain, the bitterness, the hate that I had, or to let it go. And I think as, as many, many South Africans, we, are, we have that choice. We can choose to, to let go of things, or we can choose to carry that stuff with us. If we carry it with us, that's, our, that's the responsibility we have to take. But the burden that you have by, by carrying that is huge. It, you know, it it, um, it affects everyone around you. It embitters the person that has to carry that that burden. Um, is that what your book is all about? That's what my book, Back and From the Anger, is all about. It's a book about a transformation from from bitterness, from 
from retribution, from hate, into forgiveness, reconciliation, and personal growth, personal, you know, coming out the other side. And, and where is your book available? It's at uh, all the exclusive books in the country. Okay. And your new album? My new album is called Now's the Time. Uh, the genesis of the album started when I was in America. I went to Duke University to do a degree, a master's degree, and that's where I met Karen. And, um, she a master's was, degree in what? Uh, uh, liberal arts, liberal arts masters, which actually ended up being um, focusing on documentary studies. But it included creative writing and you know, uh, a study of the ethnography of Eastern religion and moral philosophy. It had a lot of different components to it. Um, and, and when Karen and I decided to live our dreams, to, Karen left to a job at the Duke. Karen was an archivist at the Duke Library. We, and we decided to come back to South Africa. It was to follow a dream. It was to, it was, we had an idea of what we uh, wanted to do. And we both, our wedding vows were basically on the theme of now is the time. Now is the time to leave the shore, to go out there and to, and to find what really um, enriches your life. How to live your life fully. Okay, so on that note, how was your time at Blues at Nysmore? Blues was, I walked in here and it was like a, I thought I'd walked through the time portal back to the 60s. Yeah. But what a lovely place. Yeah. What a great place. And great, great staff, great energy. Yeah. Um, it was a lovely, great lovely vibe. gig for me. Yeah. It was fantastic to be here. An attentive audience. You know, people that wanted to hear and wanted to listen. You knew how to listen to music. It was lovely. And where, where to next? Well, we're going back to oh. our little home in Napier for a bit of a rest and then there's more gigs coming up in Cape Town um, and then I have to complete my second book um, and What's then my, my next book is a continuation of the first it's called how to build a house in the mountains oh, wow. and it's a it's a it's a book on, it's on how to further you know to um, continue to it's one thing to heal yourself and to let go of the past but then how do you proceed into the future well, so the, thank you very much thank you thank you Thank you. 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 Bye. Bye.